All right. I am going to hope and pray that this is on and that it's recording. Good morning, Marcelino. Good morning. He is here to uh, have a conversation about the age of responsibility, and I think it will just be between the two of us today. So we'll go ahead and get started. And what I want to do with this one is I want to help plan backwards from the writing prompt. So we're going to look at the writing prompt, and then we're going to kind of go backwards and see how we can move from the text of the article to your text in the essay. Yeah. So here's the prompt that, you're, that you will be given. In what is the age of responsibility, Alan Greenblatt observes, in America, adulthood already has its familiar compass points, 18 and 21. But what is the age of responsibility, and what if that age, the point when citizens are responsible enough to earn all of the rights that democracy confers upon its people, bears no resemblance to the ages already enshrined in law? Finding the answers to those questions is a more complicated task than simply choosing a milestone birthday. What is the age of responsibility? That is, when should a person be considered an adult? Use your notes, readings, observations, and experience to support your position. In your response, be sure to consider all the three R's, rights, rights, and responsibilities involved in becoming a mature person, an adult. So, um, we're going to start with the text, with the article. What is Greenblatt's major claim? Um, that 18 is not the age of responsibility in 21 should be played. <laughs> this is well, one, one way you can tell is when there's an, uh, the, the title, and especially a subtitle, they work together to kind of give it to you. Mm -hmm. And it all depends on how the author wanted to put this together. What this article has is called an implicit thesis, which means you can't really pinpoint the sentence, what is the main idea. Mm -hmm. But if you take the two together, what is the age of responsibility from sex to driving to juvenile justice to drinking, state and local laws send young people mixed messages about their own maturity. Is there a better way? You kind of have it there. So if you didn't look at the rest of the essay, what could you predict would be the major claim just from the title and the subtitle? Mm -hmm. to drinking. I'm from driving. What are you saying? So that whole exactly. sentence there. You're the, so from sex to driving to juvenile justice sitting, state and local laws send young people mixed yeah. messages about their own maturity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. Yeah. And so it's really hard to tell based on um, when young people are old enough to do one thing, but they're not old enough to do something else which seems even yeah. more complicated or complicated. So what kind of evidence do you describe the signals? What's he talking about? He gets um, somebody just in McNall and he's talk, talking about this story in the three and um, at the airport they will land right mm -hmm. even though he's old enough to drive and drink. Yep. There are several of those stories. He starts with several of those stories. Now, he also gives evidence as to why certain ages have been picked. What are some things he says about age of 21? Why is 21 kind of stuck in people's minds? For drinking age? Yes. They know that binge drinking on campus is rampant, and despite this, students were given the right to drink at an earlier age, they might handle it more responsibly. Okay, so why do you think 21 was picked for drinking, though? I was too young. 18 would be too young? 
Look at paragraph seven. Take a quick look at that paragraph and, and we'll start with when 21 became a significant age for adulthood. Mm -hmm. What what was said about it? That uh, twenty one stuck as a threshold age. Because. Because like, those considered the age of adulthood because that's when men are capable of wearing a full suit of armor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the other one too was that it was the set of seven. Yeah. Um. I do you remember in um, your reading of uh, Mask of the Red Death, the seven stages of man? It's related to that. And so three times seven is 21. So your first seven years is your childhood. Yeah. Your second seven years is your your adolescence. Mm -hmm. And then the third goes on to young adult. And then it, it goes from there in eight in increments of seven. Mm -hmm. So it could be why 21 is is sticking in a lot of people's minds when it comes to the age of drinking now what about 18 um what what is significant about 18 18. no Wait. what happens at 18. that's when you can go to the army head off to the army mm -hmm. Because you're done with all your yeah. public education, it's and that's the point at which you choose whether you're going to be in a job or you're going to go off and get a career. Mm -hmm. So what you had said earlier about you know lowering the drinking age to 18 because so many young people go to college, mm -hmm. and they've got that three years where, you know, they're at college after they've graduated from high school, and then they've got these friends who are old enough to drink they're going to come right in and drink with them. Yes. So that's that's the argument there. Um, what did you think about that when you read it? Did you think that was a good idea? We're going to get to 18? Uh-huh. I think they're going to do no matter what. Like, they'll always find a way. Mm -hmm. So if they lowered it maybe to 18, then younger kids would start, like, younger people, 15, 14, would start doing it also. Uh -huh. Okay. Since like twenty one, they're getting it. Right. Yeah. So eighteen are getting it. So if you're eighteen and it's legal, then people younger than you. Then younger than that. So there's. Do you feel that there's kind of like this three or four year uh, period where it's like they're learning to do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the three R's because that is part of the prompt. So. What does the term rights, R-I-G-T-H-T-S, mean? Like the rights you have, what you can and can't do. Okay. And what does the R-I-T-E-S mean? I forgot that one. That's the one about birthdays, weddings. Um, oh, like special dates. Yeah, the dates that have been... or ceremonies at certain points in people's lives mm -hmm. so some of them are uh attached to ages and we'll look at those in just a few minutes but it's you know you're considered old enough to do something and so you go through the ceremony that says now you're old enough mm -hmm. so responsibilities means what like being responsible like what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. Yeah, what, mm -hmm. what, what's expected of you now to work independently from yeah. anybody else. Okay, so at what age do you believe students should independently stand up for their rights? What do you mean stand up? Though? Well, we know that um, legally at 18, high school students at that point, once they've turned 18, they're supposed to be able to clear their own absences, get themselves to school and yeah. whatnot. Um, at what point can they stand up to their parents and say, you know what, I'm old enough to handle this responsibility. Uh, leave me alone, basically. Um, what age do you think that they can start handling more and more responsibility 
pulling away from the control of their parents? I think my personal opinion is like not have like be fully independent until like around 15, 16, like start young so you can be more responsible when you grow. Okay. And then 18 is like, I think like they should keep it at 18 where it's like the official age. So what are some of the things that you would think at age 15 and 16, now you have more independent responsibilities of them and your parents are no longer responsible? Where, where, what kind of things do you think happen at 15? You see how you go to parties, stuff like that. Okay. So being able to leave the house in certain time periods without having to say where you're at. Mm -hmm. Okay. And not have to have a curfew. Like. Okay. No curfews. Good. Um, and that's also where we start getting the driver's licenses. So driver's licenses, 15 and a half to get your permit. And then when you're 16, you can have that license. But um, in California, they've added the criteria that for the first six months, you have to have a licensed driver with you, even in that six months after you've turned 16. Um, do you think that's reasonable? I didn't hear that. What I heard was for the first year, you can't drive with any friends. Right. Yeah. There, nobody in the car under 18, unless, I thought it was unless there mm -hmm. is a 23 or older adult in the car. So if you have a 23 year old. I think so. I don't know. We have to look that up. Um, right. I know that it's gotten very complicated. So what if you have a license driver in it? and you have your license? Again, that person has to be older than 18 because yeah. it's all come back down to uh, when are you responsible? Mm -hmm. Um, I was driving down Gosford the other day, heading off to Sam's Club, and there was a car, and I could tell it was full of young people, bopping their heads, and they're doing, mm -hmm. and one kid's flipping his finger at me, and I'm like, what did I do? I'm just, I look over, they look like they're happy, and they're having a good time, and I smile, and I nod, and I get flipped off. Mm -hmm. So it's that kind of mob behavior when young people are together, they get goofy. Yeah. And it, and I noticed that that he was the driver was passing me in an intersection, which of course is illegal, yeah. but it's just to get around because he's young and he needs to go faster than me. Yeah. So um, I can see why that was done, why that law was put into place in California, because I don't know, have you, have you, um, well, I don't want you to give anything away here because it is being recorded, <laughs> but have you known circumstances where people will get in the same car and just you know they're all together they're having mm -hmm. a good time and kind of yes. drive a little wild so it's that kind of thing where um when can you be fully responsible to get into that car and drive it safely do you think like, there is a magic age no not really because like I'll see I'll see old people just standing on the car doing the same stuff too. That's true. That's true. There are good drivers, there are bad drivers, and they come in all ages. Mm -hmm. So at what age do the rights below take place? And then what is the new responsibility? And I don't know if you know um have you heard what a quinceanera is? Yeah, I used to dance for them. Okay. Yeah. What age does that happen at? Fifteen. Fifteen. That's the quince part. The bar or bat mitzvah, have you heard of that one? I've heard of it, but I don't know exactly. It's uh, a Jewish tradition. It's when the boy the boy is the bar mitzvah, the girl is the bat mitzvah, mm -hmm. and it's both when they turn 13. Oh. And in that one, the new responsibility is that they can now read the Torah independently, which is the Jewish um, Bible. Um, so at that point, they're old enough to understand the word of God. Mm -hmm. By the way, what, what, uh, for the quinceanera, what was the new responsibility? Do you know? Where she turns into a woman? Yes, when she turns into a woman. Confirmation, do you know that one? Nope. This one is, um, it's a Catholic uh, rite, and it is, I believe, a, it, there's tests that the young people have to go through, and once they pass that test, then they are confirmed. 
but it's still happening within the ages of 14, 15, somewhere in there. They, they're quizzed on, the again, it comes down to the word of God and, and what they know about it. And at that point, they are now... Uh, what age was it? Uh, usually around 15. It all depends on when they pass their tests. Yeah. So I guess you could say it's kind of like when, you know, when they get it right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, okay. How old did they start at? Um, I think probably about 13 they can start. I th it, what happens is they're going to confirmation classes. Yeah. And when the, uh, I think, it's nuns primarily that, that help them do that or um, anyway when they feel that they're ready for it then they'll then they'll they have to have certain Bible verses memorized and so forth and then it's then they are confirmed that they're ready to you know be an independent member of the church mm -hmm. sweet 16 16 16 <laughs> is there a new responsibility you think with 16 no, I think it's just the party, yeah. right? And I, and perhaps it, it because it is, you know, I find it related to the quinceanera. Um, it's the same kind of social significance. Mm -hmm. Again, it's when the person is sixteen, and now becomes responsible. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is that what is the implication of responsibility in each of these ceremonies? Um, what do all of these basically say about responsibility? Basically, like them turning into their own person, mm -hmm. finding who they are. Do you find that these ages are about right for those kinds of things? You said one started at 13, something like that. It's confirmation oh. about yeah. four, 13, 14. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, Barry Bot Mitch yeah. was 13. That, I don't really agree with that. You don't agree with that? Yeah, I think that is too young. Okay. But, like, can say two sixteen out of the okay. company, as you just said. Okay. The other uh, part of it, and I believe Greenblatt refers to it. Let's make sure, because I don't want to. Um, usually, this is the point at which girls especially can start having children. That's why you have in Romeo and Juliet, if you remember that from last year, um, why were they marrying off Juliet so young? Do you remember how old she was when her father told her, we're going to have you marry Paris? I didn't. You didn't do that one? Yeah. Um, it was a week before her 14th birthday. Mm -hmm. And the implication is because once the girl starts being able to have children, then she's she's a woman now. So at least that's the way it was in that society, and it still kind of carries over into our society today. At fourteen. At fourteen. So, thinking about the ages where we have first the traditional rights of young people that mm -hmm. there are certain things that at certain ages young people are in our society said to be able to do things. Um, that they have the emotional and mental responsibility to do it, and that they now are independent people and can stand up for their own rights. At what age do you think that all three of those become meaningful? How many say eight? Okay. Because? I oh, don't know, I just feel like eight seems like like the age or like everything like like how they made it um that's when they like your own guardian and stuff like that right like i feel like like you're not fully matured until like 23 or 25 mm -hmm. like that. so 18 i think that's when you should be able to like take care of yourself live your life and like go accomplish what you want to do and realize that when you make mistakes and you do have to pay for some of the consequences for those mistakes but still it is a learning process. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that earlier, that there needs to be years of learning. Yeah. And so 18 gives you those three years of learning. Um, the the whole car rental thing. Uh, I, that. I never have either, actually. Um, the I know a lot of it has to do with entering into a contract. And with um, 
with rental cars. As long as you buy the insurance on the rental car, you can go off and drag race the new thing and you're yeah. pretty much covered. So maybe with the car rental companies, obviously maybe they've done some research as to when, you know, if you wreck your own car, that's one thing. But if you're wrecking a car that you've borrowed, that may be something different. But isn't that one for the airport? Well, the car rental car companies are everywhere. So say you wanted to rent a car, right? mm -hmm. but not the airport one. Do you think they'll let them? Mm -mm. No. Okay. Hertz, Please. Enterprise, all of those car rental companies, they have offices all over, including airports. Yeah. So, um, so just because it was at airport doesn't make doesn't difference. make any so, difference. How would you have to be a rental? Well, according to this, twenty three, and I think that's still the case. Um, was Justin McNall was twenty by the time he was twenty three. Oh. Uh, still bristles at the memory he wasn't allowed to do at twenty three. So he had, by the time he was 23, had graduated, married, gone to work for the police force, goes up to uh, rent a car at the airport, and they say, um, sorry, you're 23, we can't rent you one. It would be interesting to know if, if that is still the case. You know, this article was written in 2009. It would be interesting if somebody wanted to, to look up and see, is that still the case? That would be interesting. Not that well, we'll go ahead and have All the right. rest of the conversation, but I think it is something that you might want to look into a little bit later. If you do find it, you can include it in your essay. Um, because I, I do think that that is, that is one of the more unreasonable ages. Yeah, I just find that it makes no sense. Yeah. Um, so the questions go back to, uh, you know, what they think the, the, age of responsibility is. So I got a couple of the answers from the discussion boards. Here's one of them. I feel the senior year of high school is where you should begin to figure your life out and plan everything after that year. As a teenager, we begin to be more exposed to alcohol, R-rated movies, and sexual intercourse. I believe once you turn 18, you have the freedom to do you. The age I believe you should start getting your driver's license in R-rated movies is 16. I think the ages they have at the moment are reasonable. I don't think that sh they should change one age to allow drinking, driving, and going into the military. The ages they have set now are reasonable. Uh, do you agree with this person? Disagree? Some I agree. agree? Okay. We hadn't thought about the R-rated movies because what's the R-rated movie age? 18, isn't it? I thought it was 17. No, wait. 17. Which have, usually have to go ask for ID for 18. Right. And there's also the rating NC-17. NC-17 yeah. definitely, in 17 and below can't go in. But, that's what we need to look for. Okay, that one you can look at. Go ahead and look at oh. R-rated movies. For, for R-rated movies, what, um, what is the age? Okay. Like a dream, like it's, um, it's this age, right. Well, I think that's why they have the NC-17 rating, because when it gets that explicit, then they have to, um, and, and that's usually the ones that are either very violent or very sexually graphic. It's 18. It is 18? Yeah, okay. they have the photo ID. Okay. Okay. Um, now, so this person is saying that the R-rated movie should be able to get in at 16. And if we're talking again about that two-year learning period. No, but this one's 16. 17, 17. Well, they're, they're, this person's saying that they think that the R-rated movie age for admittance should be 16. Oh, yeah. Have you... Um, well, I don't know. Do you does your do your does your dad get to let you watch some R-rated movies, or do you watch them? Oh, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, usually it's like I'll go my if I go to the theaters with my friends. Like usually, like my friends don't know what movie I'm watching. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't really mind that much. Um, and like my friend's dad or my not usually my friends. 
don't think they really do. Okay. But usually my parents, parents, my friends' parents, I mean, they're like children that I do. Ah. Like uh, well, I, for me, I always go back to this story. Now, I was much younger than this anyway. Um, we had the movie. It was the movie channel. That was the yeah. only one who was in existence mm-hmm. when I was a freshman. Or, yeah. um, no, I was in junior high. And I was very close. We, we lived very close to the school. So at lunchtime, I got to walk home, eat lunch, and then go back. My mom was working, so I was by myself. Mm-hmm. And I would have about 30 to 45 minutes. And so I would put on the TV just to have company. And I remember the movie that was on was called The Deer Hunter. And there's one part in The Deer Hunter that's basically showing Russian roulette. Yeah. And I had never known about Russian roulette before. And so you figure junior high, I was about 12 years old, and I'm watching the scene where they're filming this game of Russian roulette, and somebody loses. And it just completely shook me up, and I had to go back to school, and I'm traumatized. So I knew at that point, you know, okay, now I know why my mom doesn't want me watching rated movies. But I'm wondering, is there a case to be made that, Teenagers are now exposed to so much that an R-rated movie wouldn't shake them up that much. I think because like, it, it's not like how it was back then. Like now, almost anything is out in the open, like easy to access. Like even for an R-rated movie, if you don't hear any of that stuff, like some people they just like go ask the strangers and like that. Like that's old enough why you to get a movie. Yeah. Well, it's it's a rough one, and I think that one it does have a lot to do with your personal responsibility, what you can handle being exposed to, and that's where parents come in too, because I think they know you. I don't know. Um, is it possible that parents may be too protective when it comes to the content that's in some of these things? If the parents are too protective, they're not like you're still gonna see. Like, yeah. Like intentionally, unintentionally, like now, like, well, how can I say? It? Like, almost anything that's just out there, okay. like, you don't really have to, like, try so hard. And no matter, like, what age this or that, people will still do it. Okay. All right. Here's another post I would draw the line to separate adulthood from childhood at drinking. I would draw the line here because I believe that drinking is something adults should do. I don't really think that there is one specific age to be established as the threshold because some things should have a higher age set. I believe that drinking and fighting in the military should have the same age of 23. For watching R-rated movies, I believe that the age should be set depending on what is happening in the movie. What do you think? Um... I would draw the line to separate adulthood from childhood at drinking. Uh-huh. I would draw the line here because I believe that drinking is something adults should do. So I'm assuming that this person is saying is that 21 definitely should be the age of drinking because that is an adult activity. Yeah, the age to buy it. Okay. What about to drink it then? To drink it, people people always like find a way from either asking somebody else to buy from somebody they know or just stealing it. I think what bothers a lot of people is when students do go to college and there is that binge drinking. Yeah. Um, because it's like, where's the line? Where is my line of uh, being able to handle it all? And it does, for some teenagers, it does kill them. It does damage yeah. to them permanently. Usually teenagers, though, they drink it for, like, just have fun and, like, parties. But, like, adults, they, like, they're, like, you know, stressed out. Like, <laughs> and, like, something, like... Yeah. yeah. That's a possibility, too. Now, they're still adults who they binge drink, too. It doesn't yeah. matter, you know, into their 40s, 50s, mm-hmm. 60s. And so... Um, like, what I'm saying is, like, usually, like, people, like, under the age or at the age, they won't drink it like like easy to stress or that stuff. Like they'll mm-hmm. just drink it just like to like fit in and do that part of the social media. Yeah. There is a social aspect to it. Um 
it just it's my husband is always one to say you're putting limits on you know these these other things alcohol is a drug mm -hmm. and why the the certain um you know there's all kinds of laws with with smoking and with all of this other stuff because drinking is a drug just as well as anything else he's all into to prohibition himself but i don't think he's going to get there they tried that once and it didn't work more about that next year when you read the get great gatsby okay so going back to the essay so yeah. looking again at this um prompt what are the tasks that you need to do here so the first question is what is the thesis Let's figure out what you're being asked. What are you being asked? What's the age of responsibility? What age are you like, responsible for yourself? All right. And so now that you know what the question is, what is your thesis, Marcelino? <laughs> I think that the answer to the thesis, I think it would be. Okay. So you believe that 18 is the age at which. Um, young people are now aware of their responsibilities and their rights yeah okay so it's 18 so you do kind of under 18 yeah to be convicted as a child mm -hmm. but over 18 so like they're like 21 then why don't they just change it to 21 so up until all the way up until 18 you are still be convicted as a child until when they change it. and in fact the supreme court has changed some of the laws um they have said for sure they are not to to sentence anyone 18 and younger to the death penalty they cannot do that nor can they sentence them to life in prison now as they get older then it becomes a decision on the judge and that's when they have to evaluate them psychologically 18 is the age at which nobody doesn't matter what you do if you're under 18 and under you're not going to be sentenced to life in prison or the death penalty so they're looking at between 18 and 21 i think those can be those are uh, ages at which it has to be evaluated case by case mm -hmm. so okay so what you're doing is you're saying okay it's going to be 18. what would you have to do to be sentenced to the death penalty um murder somebody murder there's murder. there's lots of cases in fact if you stay with us we're going to get to a module called juvenile justice and there are cases at which for example a young man was watching wrestling and decided to try one of the moves on his sister and killed her he was sentenced to life in prison i think he was originally sentenced to the death penalty no, then, yeah so it was many years ago and then it was commuted down to life in prison mm -hmm. but he's still there he's in his 40s now so but this was a crime that was committed when he was i believe 13. so has he learned his lesson is he mature enough now that we should give him a second chance at life okay. yeah so it's it's that's why this is so important when we figure out about you know a, a, what Greenblatt brings up in fact some part of what Greenblatt brings up is another piece of evidence that's used in that module has to do with the frontal do you remember about the prefrontal cortex you remember the reading about that uh, <clears throat> let's see. Let's see. Like after all those years I think I like, he, like, I think he said, like, he, he, he able to get out. Okay. Under the new laws, he would be. Because they would still put the child away, probably in some kind of a, a juvenile detention facility, but give him counseling, give him education. And then um, at 18, hope that he's responsible enough to go out and live his life independently. So back then when they made him to life, did they have juvenile hall or was it all one thing? Actually, there's records where sometimes they would put him in juvenile hall, but I believe this particular young man was sentenced to an adult prison. 
thought I could see your work. And it still happens in some places in the country. In paragraph five, uh, what I have found, or what they found, let me back up and just read the whole thing. Meanwhile, legislatures and courts are hearing a very different argument from a group of people that haven't traditionally testified before them, neuroscientists. Using advanced brain scanning technology, scientists are getting a better view of how the human brain develops than ever before. And what they found is that in most people, the prefrontal cortex and its links to other regions of the brain are not fully formed until the age twenty-five. And these areas are the seat of executive decision making, the parts of the brain that allow people to think through the likely consequences of an action, weigh the risks and benefits, and stop themselves from acting on impulse. In other words, the stuff that makes you a mature person. So what, what they have found is the brain was faster than the cranium. Mm -hmm. And even into your 20s, you're still growing physically. Yeah. And so what they've as the brain has expanded, but the cranium is still trying to catch up, prefrontal cortex kind of goes in, it recedes in, and that affects your decision-making processes. Mm -hmm. So when you see these young people, get together and they do these crazy things and they know they're probably you know they don't even think about I must be being stupid right now feel that it has to do with that prefrontal cortex not being able to fully operate in the brain yeah. um, do you do you know the people you know and and do you think that's a possibility that it affects how young people make some of their decisions. Does it make sense to you? How when it goes in, it makes their decision making? Yeah, it affects the decision making. Kind of, kind of not, because like, there's always like, the responsible people and then there's just others who just want to have fun. Okay. Though I don't really care about their school education or the best of Either because, um, like, family or problems mm -hmm. or just they just don't really care okay so when does that responsibility sense uh are you, so you're saying that that response sense of responsibility should always remain even in this situation if the prefrontal cortex may or may not be there so at what age do teenagers they should know the difference between right and wrong. 18. 18. We're still at 18. Okay. 18. He's sticking to that 18, everybody. 18. <laughs> okay, so what I wanted to do was show you the structure of evidence, how you would put this together. And so um, this is in that one video that I show everybody how what I look for. And it's pretty standard in what everybody is looking for. So even those of you, if you're listening from Mr. Short's class, I know that this is how he would look at these as well. You start with that topic sentence, and then you present some of the evidence. Now, remember that the prompt is asking you to use evidence from the reading, from your observations, and your personal experiences. So it can be any type of evidence, but we do want you to use some of it from the article. Mm -hmm. Then you need to explain how the evidence relates to the topic sentence. This is called analysis. So you yeah. you have to you have to connect the dots for your reader. And then you're going to do it again. You put in another piece of evidence and then you explain how that one relates to the topic sentence. Then you analyze how these quotes together help support what your topic sentence was and then you're going to have a concluding sentence that transitions into the next one. How many dots do I have up there? How many bullets? So how many sentences should that paragraph have? At least seven. Sometimes when you're presenting the evidence or you're explaining it, you might have to use two sentences in those. So I actually wrote a module um, or a model paragraph to show you how this would look. So my topic sentence is this first one. Many cultures, particularly in Western religious, celebrate religions, 
celebrate rites of passage when a person is, is in his or her teens. However, this really is too young to be considered an adult. So I actually have two sentences acting as my topic here. Yeah. Um, because part of what I'm doing is I'm also bringing in a counter argument. Mm -hmm. And so we talked earlier about how you know, with the bar and the bat mitzvahs happening at 13, that may be too young. So this is still really too young to be considered an adult. Now I'm bringing in the evidence. Alan Greenblatt, in his essay, What is the Age of Responsibility? Descri and notice how I made the date here. This is MLA formatting in the dates. You start with the, with the day, the month, and the year it was published. Mm -hmm. Describes the maturity of the human brain. Cool. The prefrontal cortex and its links to other regions of the brain are not fully formed until age 25, much later than anyone realized. Because of the fact that we're only using the one reading, I can put in the paragraphs. Now, if you, Marcelino, decide to go and look up another source that gives you some more of the age things, like maybe about the R-rated movies or whatever, then it gets a little bit different. Now you're going to have to put in, you know, you would put in the last name of the author. Yeah. Since it's probably going to be an online source, um, you don't have to put page numbers. But it is good to put paragraph numbers, especially for those online resources, so that it's easy for the reader to find. Okay, so there's my quote. Now I'm going to analyze where, where I'm going to explain what this has to do. Why did I pick this quote? This portion of the brain is what controls the person's ability to make logical decisions. It is frightening to think that a young man in the military can be given a firearm at the age of 18 for his brain may fully realize the consequences of its use. So I have actually I explained a little bit you know, what the prefrontal cortex is, what it's doing, because my reader hasn't read the same article I have. So I have to give them the background information that I learn. They have to have it too. Um, then I have the analysis saying, you know, they're out there with a gun and their prefrontal cortex is not developed. That's not good. <laughs> I have something that I don't know. I'm going to say it on that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Greenblatt also notes that even the Greek philosopher, oops, back, 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 back. Greenblatt <laughs> also notes that even the Greek philosopher Aristotle believed young men were considered adults at 21 because that is when they were able to fit, fit into a suit of armor. So again, it's kind of bringing in that war theme. Yeah. Yet our culture allows adolescents to enlist in the military to be sent to far reaches of the earth and fight unknown enemies for reasons that they may not be old enough to understand. Clearly, 18 is just too young to be considered a responsible adult. That's, it. That's my opinion, right. So, um, this is only meant to show you what the, how the structure of the paragraph should look. So we've got quite a few sentences there. I've got what I call chunks of information. A chunk is the evidence and the analysis. So there's two chunks per body paragraph. So when you're actually writing the essay, um, four paragraphs is all that you, that's the minimum you can go more. If you have three, that's too short. But your introduction, that doesn't have to be very long. Just a hook and a thesis. Then the body paragraphs that I have here, you need two of them. So how many pieces of information total would you be needing? Minimum four, four right? Oops. Okay. But two of those, and the conclusion where you rephrase your thesis, kind of you sum it all up for them. Okay. So do you have any questions as to what you need to do, how to put this together? No. Okay. And since there's nothing else here, we're just to go ahead and conclude our session. So I want to thank Marcelino for coming in and talking to us. And hopefully uh, the recording will come out nicely and everybody can listen to it. Thank you, Marcelino, for coming in.
melts.